These are working. Can you hear me? Yes? Has everyone had their coffee and you're ready for some group work? I hope so. <laughs> well, before we get started, I'll just um, provide a little bit of background as to um, why we're doing this and the importance of it. So let's see if the clicker works. And thank you for the kind introduction and also for having us here. It's actually, it's wonderful to be back here. I was here in a different course two years ago and it's, it's really a wonderful location and of bringing together so many wonderful minds. So enjoy the week, it's, it's a pleasure to be back. So today I will introduce you to the group work of prioritizing activities of AMR National Action Plans. So why is this so important? And I'm gonna also ask all of you in the audience in a moment, is when we look at the progress in national action plans on antimicrobial resistance. Firstly, looking at, and I'm also going to dare to use the clicker that, yes, it's true, it doesn't always work, show you the data of 2021. We see that as of right now, based on the countries that actually report to us in the tripartite annual country self-assessment survey, there's approximately 140 countries that have developed national action plans. That's all well and said. National action plans can just sit on the shelf. They may not be actively implemented. We have approximately 63 countries that not only have their national action plan, but have an operational plan that delineates roles and responsibilities and stepwise implementation. And most importantly, only 32 countries are actually funding their national action plan. So we have a lot of progress to do. And when you look at five-year trends, this is positive. For me, this is very positive. You see that, and again, it, it's going by the levels. So from, for example, see if I can get closer. No, it doesn't want to do it. Is that you see you, your countries want to be moving towards this darker green, which means you have a national action plan, you have monitoring and evaluation framework, you have funding and you're actively implementing. Whereas when countries are in more of the lower red or orange, it's the, the developing NAPs, but they may not be implementing. And so you see that there's been a big shift towards countries who have developed national action plans, more active implementation. But you see this orange piece in the middle. This is national action plans developed, perhaps not implemented. And that stayed relatively stable if you look at the graph. So we have a lot of work in actually operationalizing these national action plans. And so to support... Can I ask a question? Where, yes, oh, yeah, yeah. of course. Uh, do you have uh, that picture uh, with them with the globe, with them with the countries, where they are located? Yes, so actually, and this will be launched, um, I think it is in one week's time, or end of this week, is the latest data that you can, and I'll get to in a different slide, that you can go in and you can actually look at individual countries. And it's not only for national action plan, this indicator, but for a variety of indicators across all of the different sectors. So I think in a week's time or by Friday, it should be there. So this is a sneak preview at the moment for all of you. So then to support countries in moving forward and operationalizing, WHO currently, and we should be launching this, I hope in February, is developing what is called an, an implementation handbook for national action plans on AMR. And the idea is really to provide stepwise implementation support. And so here, we see it as a continuous cycle. Yes, governance is incredibly important to anchor the National Action Plan and also ensure the multi-sectoral coordination and governance. But then actually to operationalize, it's a continuous cycle of prioritizing activities, costing the operational plan that has your activities in there, mobilizing the resources from domestic funding, but also from other donors to actually implement the activities and then to monitor and evaluate. And likely, you will then go back and reprioritize. You may also, after costing an operational plan, go back and reprioritize. So it's really, it's a continuous cycle. And what we try to do is provide stepwise um, support, guidance, but also collation of WHO tools and guidance for countries when you need to implement these different steps and also in the different thematic areas. So step number one, strengthening governance. It's uh, all well to say we need one health and multi-sectoral governance 
putting it into action is a lot more challenging. And so what we're trying to do, we've developed a leadership skills training package and have been already piloting this in three different countries, is to provide the how tools. How do we build the leadership skills to work better within our own sectors, but I think more importantly with the other sectors. And so a lot of it really is looking at the self-awareness of you and the sector you're coming from, understanding the other multi-sectoral partners, and then building a, a consensus, having difficult conversations, building trust. I think trust is, goes a long way in the work of AMR and actually working across sectors to ultimately strengthen multi-sectoral collaboration because there is, and we've been looking at a lot of this data, there's a correlation with multi-sectoral governance mechanisms that are functioning and implementation of national action plans. So they do go very much hand in hand. So I'll, st I'll skip number two because that's your exercise today and we'll move first to number three, which is then once you have your prioritized activities, many times we don't know what they cost and you may need to reprioritize based on the cost of your activities. And so we've recently launched actually last month a, a tool, a very flexible tool that countries can use to cost and to budget your activities. The prerequisite is you need to have your prioritized activity. So it also fosters prioritization of activities at a country level, within a sector, across sectors. And what's quite nice with this tool, and, and the link is down here, is that it can be employed as a modular approach. So what does this mean? At a country level, you could have the Ministry of Health. You have your designated costing coordinator who you will be doing your budgeting and planning separately from the Ministry of Agriculture, from the Ministry of Environment. But you can do this separately and with this modular approach, you can then combine the costing of the different sectors into one plan. So this has been also tested in six countries and, and just one example in Sierra Leone, for example, they were piloting this and for an operational plan of two years, can anyone guess roughly how much that would cost of prioritized activities for two years? Ballpoint figures, any ideas? And this goes across the different gap objectives, yes? Okay, that's a, that's a start. I would say, in fact, we would go a bit lower for this case of prioritized activities. A little bit lower? Very close, 2.2 million. For prioritized activities, but it could have easily been 5 million. It depends on, on what your activities are. Um, but the nice thing too is you can then actually identify, yes. It's a, it's a good point. It's a very good question because it, national action plans are often at the moment still very disbalanced. And so, of course, the tool is only as good as the situation you use the tool in. And so, yes, in the Sierra Leone example, it is more biased towards the human health sector. But then we've also had the example of Jamaica. It's the opposite. It's actually the, the surveillance in the agricultural sector is far more advanced than in the human sector. So it, it depends on the context that the tool is being used in. Um, further then for implementation of activities, and this may be of interest to many of you here, we have what is a community of practice, discussion board really for exchanging best practices across countries um, and all the different aspects of National Action Plan implementation. So here's the link to the communi community of practice, but also, and this is currently ongoing, we have a global s uh, webinar series that we've started this year. And um, the next one actually is on the 11th of November. So I invite you to, to go to the link. It's on the, on the launch of the tracks data, so where you can see the individual country data. Um, and we've had various country experiences disseminated, such as um, National Action Plan development implementation, the role of vaccines in preventing AMR, which I think is very relevant at the moment, strengthening IPC, and how do you embed IPC within the broader AMR response, One Health approach, of course, to AMR, costing and budgeting, and just some country examples we have from Sierra Leone, from Kenya, Indonesia. I know we have many Indonesia participants here, so there's also one of the country experiences as well as there, Zimbabwe. So it's really a wealth of information and all the recordings can also be found at the link. And then, of course, least, last but not least, and incredibly important is monitoring and evaluation because you need to actually know if what you're doing is getting you in the right direction, right? 
And so here, many of you may be familiar with the global m and &E framework and recommended indicators. If not, I would highly recommend that you have a look. It's tripartite, so it really cuts across the different sectors. And it provides um, also technical references from each of the recommended indicators. And more importantly, for country level, we're currently developing country guidance that really helps also in how countries establish m and &E frameworks and facilitate actually the data collection and reporting to be able to then inform, as we saw in the, in the process, reprioritization of your activities. So we're, we will be piloting this and hopefully it will be coming out as well later this year. And this is what I had mentioned earlier. Here's the link to the Tripartite Annual Country Self-Assessment Survey, which also is part of your group work um, review. And this is a survey that's conducted every year by the tripartite across countries. It is a self-reporting assessment. So, of course, we all know there are some limitations there in terms of self-reporting. But we do get a lot of data across indicators, which are really across all of the gap objectives, and how we're able to see is there progress or not, as you saw with the national action plans. And so this year, actually, it's the highest number of countries that have participated, 163 countries. So we're very happy for that. So I encourage you to come and have a look on Friday or otherwise latest on Monday at the new data. And this now brings me to our group work. So I hope you've all seen at the back your groups that you're in. Otherwise, Valentina will also provide you an update on that briefly, um, shortly. But ultimately, we're going to place you within a country setting. It's a fictional country setting. But the idea is that you are reviewing data. Let's say you've been tasked by the AMR steering committee to review data on a specific thematic area and to then identify where the progress has been, where the gaps have been, and prioritize activities based on this. So hopefully, the learning objectives will be to critically evaluate progress of this fictitious country by looking at, and it's in the handouts, there's a, a review of progress of National Action Plan implementation, but also tracks data of this fictitious country. Acknowledging one is based on data, the other one is based on self-reporting. They may not always align, but you'll see that when you, when you review. Then be aware of the steps of prioritizing. How do you prioritize? The type of process, consultative, participatory, and that you need an agreed upon approach or methodology, which again, it's in your handout to be able to then prioritize activities, develop an operational plan where you delineate not only the activities, but also potentially sub-activities, uh, the time frame for activities, who is the implementer and what is the cost, and where could the funding be coming from, from this fictitious country, and then reflect on challenges when it comes to negotiating what these prioritized activities are. Um, and so you divide it into four groups. And think of it as you are four different technical working groups within this fictitious country. And actually, number one, you're also going to add on governance. Because as we saw in the slides, governance is incredibly important to move your national action plan. And there should be one more slide. Yes. So the task, really, step by step, is to re review the data of the country identify what are the key findings, and there's a template for SWOT analysis that you can use. Identify within your thematic area what is a national target for the next two years that you would like to achieve. And then based on this target that you have reached through consensus building within your group, develop a list of activities to really accelerate progress and fill the gaps that you identified in the SWOT analysis and the weaknesses. And then further, prioritize your activities to the top three activities. And we'll want to know in your reporting back how and why did you prioritize these three activities. And if time permits, but I think it should, is then you insert that into an operational plan that you then report back to us. And as I said, importantly, how, so the process, and why certain these activities were prioritized. And then we'll have a broader discussion on the challenges and, and maybe also the so how you found the solutions and consensus building afterwards. Are there any questions before I hand over to Valentina, who's going to direct us to the different rooms? So I was very clear. <laughs> yes? 
Okay, wonderful. Then, Valentina, I hand over to you. And you'll have f faculty to, to support you, of course, as, as well. So, um, can the slide for the group work? Okay. So, Sarah explained everything. You re all receive an email with the, the, informa the same information in terms of the PDF file and the activity sheets. As you saw from Sarah, th there is one group that is going to focus on one specific objective. So, surveillance, I mean, you have the four different objectives. So the, the thought there in terms of uh, location and rollout, everybody in the back of the room, you have a chart where you have your names and the room that is going to direct people to a given room for the breakouts. For, for you to know, so the idea is that now we have the plenary time, 15 minutes. The, the time at the breakout groups is one hour 30. Let's say until five, not to be too long. Okay, so it's about uh, one, uh, 3.30 now, 3.20 now. So at our latest five or 16.40. And then we will come back and wrap up. You have to have your presentations ready to go per group so that we can present and it's about 10 minutes per group. You know, ten, you know five to 10 minutes per group to, to wrap up here at the plenary. So for the facilitators, as you see here, we have Sara and Arnan. I don't know, Arnan, maybe you can rotate uh, around the groups also to guide the groups on the group work. For group one, we have Heike Smith that you met this morning. For group two, um, uh, Tim Walsh in group three, and then Ramanan Lam, La, Lam, Laksam Yanyarian, sorry, for group four. So we look forward to meeting you back here. There will be after four, four fifteen, some coffee break running on all the time. If you want to grab a coffee or something like that, please go ahead. And uh, we'll see you back here by, by let's say, latest f five with your presentation ready to go for, for wrap up. Okay, so that's it. And here is the different constitution of groups if you want to also have this information here. So I forgot to say something. So um, group one stays here. This is Charles Meru. Group two goes to um, Simon Meru. So follow me. Group two, follow me, please. Group three is Ogobara room. So follow Anik. Look at Anik behind. She's there. Uh, oh, come here, by the way. <laughs> you can come here quickly. And then group four to the uh, other room, which is Travoir. Follow Marianne. You know Marianne? So Anik here, th no, group three, follow her, okay? Group three. Group two, follow me, okay? Thank you.